You've gone away far to stay a little while, but you're coming back if you go ten thousand miles. Oh, it's Papa who'll tie my shoe. And Mama will glove my hand, and you will kiss my ruby lips when you come back. Look away, look away over yonder. Where are Elmer, Herman, Bert, Tom, and Charlie? The weak of will, the strong of arm, the clown, the boozer, the fighter, all, all are sleeping on the hill. One passed in a fever. One was burned in a mine. One was killed in a brawl. One died in a jail. One fell from a bridge, toiling for children and wife. All, all are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on the hill. Where are Ella, Kate, Meg, Lizzie, and Edith? The tender heart, the simple soul, the loud, the proud, the happy one. All, all are sleeping on the hill. One died in shameful childbirth, one of a thwarted love, one at the hands of a brute in a brothel, one of broken pride in the search of heart's desire, one after life in far away London and Paris was brought to her little space by Ella, Kate, and Meg. All, all are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on the hill. I know where I'm going And I know who's going with me I know Here lies the body of Lois Spears, born of Lois Fluke, daughter of Willard Fluke, wife of Cyrus Spears, mother of Myrtle and Virgil Spears, children with clear eyes and sound limbs. I was born blind. I was the happiest of women as wife, mother, and housekeeper caring for my loved ones, and making my home a place of order and bounteous hospitality. For I went about the rooms and about the garden with an instinct as sure as sight, as though there were eyes in my fingertips. Glory to God in the highest. I'll give to you the key to my chest that you may have money at your request if you will marry marry me if you will marry me i will accept the key to your chest that i may have money at my request oh yes i'll marry marry you yes i'll marry you she loved me Oh, how she loved me. I never had a chance to escape from the day she first saw me. But then, after we were married, I thought she might prove her mortality and let me out, or she might divorce me. But few die, none resign. Then I ran away for a year and was gone on a lark. But she never complained. She said all would be well, that I would return. And I did return. I told her 
that while out for a row in a boat, I had been captured near Van Buren Street by pirates on Lake Michigan and kept in chains so I could not write her. She cried and kissed me and said it was cruel, outrageous, inhuman. I then concluded our marriage was a divine dispensation and could not be dissolved except by death. I was right. He ran away and was gone for a year. When he came back, he told me the silly story of being kidnapped by pirates on Lake Michigan and kept in chains so he could not write me. I pretended to believe him, but I knew very well what he was doing, and that he met the milliner, Mrs. Williams, now and then when she went into the city to buy goods, as she said. But a promise is a promise. And marriage is marriage. And out of respect for my own character, I refuse to be drawn into a divorce by a husband who has merely grown tired of his marital vow and duty. I preached 4,000 sermons, conducted 40 revivals, baptized countless converts, yet no deed of mine shines brighter in the world and is treasured more by me. Look how I saved the blisses from the divorce and kept their children from that disgrace. To grow up moral men and women, happy themselves, a credit to the village. Reverend Wiley advised me not to divorce him for the sake of the children. And Judge Summers advised him the same. So, we stuck to the end of the path. But two of the children thought he was right, and two of the children thought I was right. And the two that sided with him blamed me, and the two that sided with me blamed him. And they all grieved for the one that they sided with. And were all torn with the guilt of judging and tortured in soul because they could not admire equally him and me. Now a gardener knows that plants grown in cellars and under stones grow weak, yellow, and twisted. And a mother would never feed milk to her baby from a diseased breast. But yet, preachers and judges they allow the raising of souls where there is no sunlight, only twilight. No warmth, only cold and dampness. Preachers and judges. From Bindle's Opera House in the village to Broadway is a great step but I tried to take it. My ambition fired when 16 years of age by seeing East Lynn played here in the village by Ralph Barrett, the coming romantic actor who enthralled my soul. True, I trailed back home a broken failure while Ralph disappeared in New York, leaving me alone in the city. But life broke him also. In all this place of silence, there are no kindred spirits. Would the Dusa could stand amidst the pathos of these quiet fields and read these words. The water is wide, I can't cross over, and neither I was a peasant girl from Germany, blue-eyed, rosy, happy and strong. And the first place I worked was at the Thomas Greens. I was the only child of Francis Harris of Virginia 
and Thomas Green of Kentucky, of valiant and honorable blood both. On a summer's day, when she was away, he stole into the kitchen and took me right in his arms and kissed me on my throat, I turning my head. Then neither of us seemed to know what happened. And I cried for what would become of me. And I cried and cried when my secret began to show. To them, I owe all that I became. Judge, member of Congress, leader in the state. One day, Mrs. Green said she understood and would make no trouble for me, and being childless, would adopt it. So she hid in the house and sent out rumors as if it were going to happen to her. And all went well, and the child was born. They were so kind to me. From my mother, I inherited vivacity, fancy, language. From my father, will, judgment, logic. All honor to them, for what a service I was to the people. Later, I married Gus Wertman, and years passed. But at political rallies, when sitters by thought I was crying at the eloquence of Hamilton Green, that was not it. No, I wanted to say, that's my son. That's my son. I am Minerva, the village poetess, hooted at, jeered at by the yahoos of the street for my heavy body, cockeye, and rolling walk. And all the more, when Butch Weldy captured me after a brutal hunt, he left me to my fate with Dr. Myers, and I sank into death, growing numb from the feet up, like one stepping deeper and deeper into a stream of ice. Will someone go to the village newspaper and gather into a book the verses I wrote? I thirsted so for love, I hungered so for life. No other man, unless it was Doc Hill, did more for the people in this town than I. And all the weak, the halt, the improvident, and those who could not pay flocked to me. I was good-hearted, easy Doc Meyer. I was healthy, happy, comfortable in my fortune, Blessed with a congenial mate, my children raised, all wedded, doing well in the world. And then one night, Minerva, the poetess, come to me in her trouble, crying. I tried to help her. She died. They indicted me. The newspapers disgraced me. My wife, perished of a broken heart, and pneumonia finished me. He protested all his life long. The newspapers lied about him villainously, that he was not responsible for Minerva's fall, but only tried to help her. Poor soul, so sunk in sin that he could not see that even in trying to help her, as he called it, he had broken the law, human and divine. Passers-by, an ancient admonition to you. If your ways be ways of pleasantness and your pathways of peace, love God and keep his commandments. I was the milliner, talked about, lied about, mother of Dora, whose strange disappearance was charged to her rearing. My eye quick to beauty saw much besides ribbons and 
baubles and feathers and leghorns and felts to set off faces and dark hair and gold. One thing I will tell you, and one I will ask. The stealers of husbands wear powder and trinkets and fashionable hats. Wives, wear them yourselves. Hats may make divorces. They also prevent them. Well, now, let me ask you. If all of the children born here in Spoon River had been reared by the county, somewhere on a farm, and the fathers and mothers had been given the freedom to live and enjoy, change mates if they wished, do you think that Spoon River had been any the worse? When Johnny comes marching home again, hoorah, hoorah, we'll give him a hearty welcome then, hoorah, hoorah. The men will cheer and the boys will shout, the ladies they will all turn out, and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. I was the first fruits of the Battle of Missionary Ridge. When I felt the bullet enter my heart, I wished I had stayed home and gone to jail for stealing the hogs of Colonel Trenery, instead of running away and joining the army. Rather a thousand times the county jail than to lie under this marble figure with wings and this granite pedestal bearing the words pro patria. What do they mean anyway? Noel Toheimer ran away to the war the day before Colonel Trenery swore out a warrant through Justice Arnett for stealing hogs. But that's not the reason he turned a soldier. He caught me running with Lucius Atherton. We quarreled, and I told him to never again cross my path. Then he stole the hogs and went to the war. Back of every soldier is a woman. Way down upon the Wabash, such land was never known. If Adam had crossed over it, the soil he'd surely own. He'd swear it was the garden he played in as a boy, and then proclaim it Eden in the state of Illinois. So, so move your, your family westward, good health you will enjoy. You'll rise to wealth and honor. I wrote him a letter, asking him for old time's sake to discharge my sick boy from the army. But maybe he couldn't read it. Then I went to town and asked James Garber, who wrote beautifully, to write him a letter. But maybe that was lost in the mails. So I traveled all the way to Washington. I was more than an hour finding the White House, and when I finally found it, they turned me away, hiding their smiles. Oh well, I thought, he ain't the same as when I boarded him and he and my husband worked together and we all called him Abe back there in Menard. As a last attempt, I turned to a guard and said, please tell him it's old Aunt Hannah Armstrong from Illinois. Come to see him about her sick boy in the army. Well, just in a moment, they let me in. And when he saw me, he broke in a laugh and dropped his business as president and wrote in his own hand Doug's discharge, talking the while of the old times and telling stories. Well, don't you see? That was the way of it. We had bought the farm from what he inherited and his brothers and sisters accused him of poisoning his father's mind against the rest of them. So we never had a moment's peace with our treasure. The moraine took the cattle and the crops failed and lightning struck the granary. So we mortgaged the farm to keep going. And he grew silent and was worried all the time. Then some of the neighbors refused to speak to us. They had sided with his brothers and sisters. <laughs> so I had nowhere to turn. At an earlier age, one might say, 
Oh, no matter. So-and-so is my friend. Or I can shake this off with a trip to Decatur. Then the dreadfulest smells infected the rooms. So I set fire to the beds and that old witch house went up in a roar of flame. <laughs> and I danced in the yard with waving arms while he wept like a freezing steer. Maurice, weep not. I am not here under this pine tree. The balmy air of spring whispers through the sweet grass. The stars sparkle, the whippoorwill calls, but thou grievest while my soul lies rapturous in the blessed nirvana of eternal light. Go to the good heart that is my husband, who broods upon what he calls our guilty love. Tell him that my love for you, no less than my love for him, wrought out my destiny, that through the flesh I won spirit and through spirit, peace. There is no marriage in heaven, but there is love. I have studied many times the marble which was chiseled for me, a boat with a furled sail at rest in a harbor. In truth, it pictures not my destination, but my life, for love, was offered me, but I shrank from its disillusionment. Sorrow knocked at my door, but I was afraid. Ambition called to me, but I dreaded the chances. Yet all the while, I hungered for meaning in my life. And now I know that one must raise the sail and catch the winds of destiny wherever they may drive the boat. To put meaning in one's life may lead to madness, but life without meaning is the torture of restlessness and vague desire. It is a boat longing for the sea and yet afraid. I went to the dances at Chandlerville and played snap out at Winchester. One time we changed partners, driving home in the moonlight of middle June. And then I found Davis. We were married and lived together for 70 years, enjoying, working, raising the 12 children, eight of whom we lost ere I had reached the age of 60. I spun, I wove, I kept the house, I nursed the sick, I made the garden, and for holiday rambled over the fields where sang the larks, and by Spoon River gathering many a shell and many a flower and medicinal weed, shouting to the wooded hills, singing to the green valley. At 96 I had lived enough, that is all, and passed to a sweet repose. What is this I hear of sorrow and weariness, anger, discontent, and drooping hopes? Degenerate sons and daughters, life is too strong for you. It takes life to love life. Hard times, hard times, come again. 